In many ways, Commander, the Valkyrie is perhaps the best light mech for our future leaders to learn on. The mech is easy to pilot, forgiving, but has a high skill ceiling. We should carefully watch for pilots who can show mastery of the tactically demanding Valkyrie, as they may have what it takes to one day lead a lance of their own. Let's go over its stats in Battletech Classic and how to use this mech to its maximum potential. After that, I'll show you an experimental design that'll make this tenacious little mech even deadlier. Production year, 2787. Star League era. Name, Valkyrie. VLK-QA. Weight, 30 tons. Faction, Federated Sons. House Davion. Role, Missile Boat. The Valkyrie QA is armed unusually for a light mech. It's one of the only commonly produced mechs to be a long-range specialist, and is probably a major reason why so many exceptional tacticians and talented Griffin pilots come from the Federated Sons. Its primary weapon is a Devastator Series 07 LRM-10 launcher with one ton of reloads and has a backup Sutil-9 medium laser on the arm. The weaponry, combined with its heavy armor for a light mech, allows it to assist its lance mates with sustained attacks against heavier opponents where a lighter Stinger or Wasp would otherwise fail. The design is produced on New Avalon, the capital world of the Federated Suns, and the seat of power from which House Davion rules. It's little surprise then that the Valkyrie is one of the standard light mechs the Feds deploy, making up 15.5% of all their light mech forces. In my time with Sun Jang Academy, it wasn't unusual for us to face off against Federated Sun's recon lances made up entirely of Valkyries. Because the Feds have been quite willing to sell the Valkyrie to mercenaries who have contracted with them over the years, a fair number of these mechs have made their way onto the free market. It shouldn't be difficult for us to buy at least one or two at a fair price, if you'd like to, Commander. Offensively, the Valkyrie is a little light on its damage. Its LRM-10 does only 6.3 damage on average, and splashes across the chassis in two groups of 1 to 5 damage each. This makes the Valkyrie a moderate threat to light mechs, an annoyance to mediums, and a mech that can be mostly ignored by heavies and assaults for more priority targets. It's quite good with heat management, however, able to jump and shoot as much as it likes to reposition and kite out its opponents. Defensively, however, the Valkyrie is outstanding, it covers all four of its critical hit locations with at least 12 points of armor. This means it can take a PPC and follow up SRM without a threat of a critical hit. It is also not destroyed by a lucky shot to the head by a PPC. Moving on to mobility, we compare the Valkyrie to the benchmark we use to judge all scout mechs. The ability to move faster than the well-armed and commonly seen recon mech, the Phoenix Hawk. With its speed, a large laser, and good armor, this mech is a big threat that other scout mechs are forced to play around. We can see the Valkyrie is outpaced by the Phoenix Hawk in all movement modes. This means, on scouting missions, an enemy Phoenix Hawk can, if it wants, run down the lance the Valkyrie is in and force it into a fight. The fact that the Valkyrie is also outgunned by the Phoenix Hawk once it closes to large laser range makes the Valkyrie a bit of a risky choice as a scout. Taking all these factors into account, Commander, I would rate the stock Valkyrie a B- for us mercenaries. It doesn't do quite enough overall damage, and is a bit slow for a scout, but its high armor and long weapon range makes it an acceptable choice in our lances. I do have a quick refit that I think will fix this firepower issue though, but first let me brief you on how our pilot should use the standard version if we do decide to take it into battle, as is. What makes the Valkyrie one of the most tactically challenging light mechs to use is its three distinct fighting styles. In order to master the mech, pilots must analyze the enemy mech's capabilities before choosing how to engage. They must also be constantly reassessing if they should switch fighting styles in order to maximize its contribution in a fight. The first fighting style is attack with the LRM-10 while out of range of the enemy. Combined with its speed and superior range, a Valkyrie pilot may very well be able to pick their opponent apart and never get hit. Keep in mind, however, that while this is the lowest risk, it is also the lowest reward, as the LRM-10 has limited ammunition and a pilot will not be hitting consistently at maximum range. Green or cowardly pilots using this fighting style exclusively will have very little impact on a fight. Pilots should be aggressive, and should always be looking for the right time to employ fighting style number 2, closing the distance to 8-14 to 14 hexes so the LRM-10 hits more often. This will likely result in the Valkyrie taking a bit of return fire, but the pilot should not be afraid, as the mech is armored enough to take some punishment. What makes the Valkyrie so tactically challenging is properly gauging when closing the distance will result in favorable trades. Generally speaking, if the opponent has low armor on either the center torso, a location with ammunition, or a good weapon, and can only fight back with at most a large laser, closing the distance to where the LRM-10 is at medium range and the enemy weapon is at long range 
is probably worthwhile. If our pilots misjudge the damage, or the trades start to not go well, the Valkyrie's speed usually allows a pilot to hop back and resume fighting in fighting style number 1. Fighting style number 3, the last fighting style, is closing the distance to 6 to 9 hexes and bringing the medium laser into play. This will likely result in unfavorable trades if done one on one. Therefore, it should only be done if the enemy mech is severely injured or the Valkyrie is part of a lance trying to finish a mech as quickly as possible. As a further tactical challenge, as the Valkyrie fights in these modes, pilots should carefully watch where the piercing shots of their lance mates land and then use the Valkyrie's speed to rotate over to the weakened side to try to crit out the hole. By moving to the weakened left or right sides of their victims, a pilot will considerably increase the chance of critting out a vulnerable location. With that being said, let's go over to the mech bay and I'll show you a refit our enemies will need to watch out for, they'll chew them up. We're designating this experimental Valkyrie MERCX1 and naming it the Maneater. This change is intended to increase the original Valkyrie's limited firepower so it's able to devour lights, mediums, and heavies alike. For this refit, we swapped the LRM-10 for a PPC and dropped half a ton of armor and a jump jet to make space for the new weapon. The refit is a bit pricey, but I think it's worthwhile, costing 200,000 C-bills or 9.1% of the mech's total cost. It's a quick, 3-day, Class B field refit, meaning we can get it done without any specialized facilities. We just need a crane and some standardized tools. The change from an LRM-10 doing two groups of 1-5 to five damage to a single blast of a PPC doing 10 damage cannot be overstated. That level of firepower can completely strip the armor off a location of a light or even medium mech, exposing them to critical threats in a single shot. This will force them into an early decision to retreat, eject ammunition, or in some instances, the Maneater may also one-shot these types of mechs. The weapon swap now makes the Valkyrie a legitimate threat against heavies and assaults. Pilots with this upgrade will fight in the same style as they did with the original Valkyrie QA, but with a better weapon. They will use their speed to maneuver to a favorable trading range and rotate to the sides in order to attack weak spots in the armor. Veterans may point out the weapon's loadout and profile is very similar to the Draconis Combine's Panther, and this is intentional. The Combine keeps a tight grip around the effective Panther chassis, and it's virtually impossible for us mercs to get our hands on one. This Valkyrie upgrade gives us access to a battle mech with a similar playstyle, albeit without the critical hit potential of an SRM, but with a slightly higher maneuverability. The changes reduce overall armor, but also remove the chance of getting killed by an ammo explosion. Lack of ammunition also means higher endurance and better logistics, as the mech will never have to leave a fight to reload. While we did reduce the jump jets, the maneuverability is still slightly better than the Draconis Combine's Panther, so I don't expect this to be an issue. My one concern for this experimental design is its heat management. Our pilots may need to occasionally spend a turn cooling down, and will need to make some adjustments so they don't jump their mech as much. I'll be monitoring their field performance carefully, as this is one of our more ambitious designs. Yeah, we ran out of patience, for your love with the cold hard hatred. 